the soundbite they use for every challenge is, I've never done this before. It must be so annoying, I guess, for the people who had spent years developing their craft in comedy or improv or any of this kind of stuff. And um, I just was running in, running about the work and being like, I've never done this before, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. Welcome to Snatched, a Gay Times original series hosted by me, Sam Dampshness, where each week we will be chatting with the latest eliminated queen of Drag Race UK season four. This week it is Dakota Schiffer. Dakota, how are you, my babe? Um, trying to cure my hangover with a cup of tea. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm um, uh, very overwhelmed and um, yeah, just uh, excited for the interview. So. Dakota, social media isn't happy. It's yeah. absolutely bedlam. My phone is hot. Um, I don't think my phone has ever been so hot. It was like to like turn off so many notifications from apps because it was um getting a bit overwhelming. But I'm very happy with all the love. Like, of course, like no one really wants to be, I think. I mean, I don't know. Everyone keeps saying it's good to be the robbed queen. I don't think I don't necessarily feel robbed, but the words that's coming up on my social media, how many bloody times, like, I don't know. I'm just uh, very shocked by the reaction, but flattered and very grateful. <laughs> I uh, put your name into Twitter just yes. to see the reaction. Okay. And th okay. There's a couple that made me laugh. Okay. So one person wrote Ofcom are going to be seriously, seriously hearing from me. <laughs> <laughs> While another tweeted, this episode is Michelle's Drag Race, so Dakota Schiffer's elimination doesn't count. Um, <laughs> you're going to have to agree. Are you going to be back next week then? Are you, are you just going to walk into the workroom like nothing happened? Um, we'll have to wait and see for any twists, but um, I, I don't know you by my reaction, but el elimination seemed pretty final to me. I don't know how it seemed uh, to you, but um, no, I'm just... Um, that, that I think knowing that the reaction has been what it is and obviously the circumstances of the episode as well with Rue not being able to be there. I think there's been some hilarious Twitter moments because of it and I'm um, I'm enjoying every single one of them. So. <laughs> I mean, obviously RuPaul not being there was, you know, uh, circumstances that couldn't be controlled. So how did it feel to be oh, told yeah. to sashay away by Michelle Visage, <laughs> not RuPaul? Yeah, no, I think obviously no one expects that going in, but I I guess, I don't know, like, if you were a, a drag, like a drag race super fan going in as also a drag queen, like, I'm sure, I guess I'm kind of glad it happened to me because I feel like if it happened to anyone else, they probably would have been really upset. <laughs> but I just, I'm not, I, yeah, I was, I'm very humbled by the whole experience and, you know, I enjoyed, I've enjoyed the show for years, but I'm not, I'm not the kind of person that I needed that kind of stuff. Like, I, I, I don't think I needed that um ever like I saw a couple of people tweeting like I shouldn't get to hear from Rue the last time and I was just like I got comments from Rue when I was winning challenges like I'm like very happy that of the comments that I got from Rue in the season you know um and Michelle's exit line was very very sweet um let's put the super in supermodel so um I'll take that to the banks <laughs> I mean you now have made history twice mm -hmm. so first trans woman <laughs> on Drag Race UK and first contestant to be told Sasha away by Michelle Visage I mean you know you, you can't get any better than that they keep throwing all these uh, firsts at me um I don't know how I was meant to prepare but yes <laughs> next up first trans woman to win Drag Race UK All-Stars yeah well we, we, we will see, <laughs> we will see. <laughs> uh, Dakota do you think you deserve to be in the bottom two this week um I think I don't know but bluntly no <laughs> um I think it's hard for me because there's a balance of trying to find on the runway, having a brand and an aesthetic and also showing variety. And I think maybe that's not a balance I necessarily got the hang of. And I think there was almost the opposite commentary in Untucked for some of the other girls where it was almost like we lost maybe the idea of who they were in the makeover challenge. And But the makeover challenge brief is so broad. <laughs> and I think sometimes the judging for the makeover can feel like you're comparing apples and oranges and there's never really a rhyme or reason to do well. Sometimes they like you to look completely identical. Sometimes they like you to be in completely different outfits, but complementing each other. So there's no real rhyme or reason. So I had no idea what they were going to say to me. And my comments are really positive as well. Like I, I, I stand by like the makeup job I did on Lucy. Like I think she looked so beautiful and she felt beautiful. And that was the most important thing for me. I just kept saying the whole challenge. Like as long as you feel comfortable, I, I've won. 
and I did win in that regard because she was glowing and that just made my heart beam so <laughs> She looks stunning and I think you've completely fulfilled the family resemblance part of the challenge. So like you said, it's, it's confusing. What are they looking for? <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, I know. I think, but I understand their critiques and I I think watching it now, um, I understand the kind of lack of variety comments. I think for me, I was so conscious about going in, having a brand, because I think there's so many drag queens, there's so much drag race nowadays. Like if you don't, put your stamp and make it very clear then um, on what your drag is and who you are and your perspective, then it's quite easy to get lost in all the feathers and rhinestones and, you know, you know, everything. So I think I thought I'd be standing out by doing what I was doing and having a really clear viewpoint. Um, but I think that's what got me kicked out in the end. <laughs> but, um, whatever. <laughs> whatever. But also, it is frustrating because your placements over these past couple of weeks have been um, very frustrating because you should have been in the top for Snatch Game, a hill a lot of people will die on. I know. I'll die on that hill as well. I think LaPhil commented on something similar, um, I think, in uh, watching some of their exit interviews. I think I felt as if maybe, but also LaPhil is... Um, quite a confident individual. Um, I I think I let people gaslight me into thinking that I may have not done a good job. And I think I struggled having faith with myself on set. And I think I was very, when they told me I was safe snatch game, I was like, oh my God, thank God I'm here another week. And I didn't think, I didn't think to credit the work that I put in to that snatch game performance. And um, it sucks because I wish I would have got critiques and I think it would have made this week feel a little softer in a sense, knowing that I went out the previous week proving that I could also do comedy. Um, but, you know, the audience reaction has given me that validation um, and I've had validation from the judges in other weeks. So um, I'm just very glad the British public enjoyed my Pete Burns. My coats when arrested. <laughs> <laughs> no, you absolutely proved that you can do comedy. I remember when I spoke to you last time you said that you want to show that you can get down with the comedy girls and you absolutely did that so how do you feel when you actually look back on your run on Drag Race? I'm so proud I, I genuinely don't think I could have done any more like I was a student um going in like I didn't have the most money to spend on costumes and I didn't have the most experience in pretty much anything. You can hear like the the, the sound bite they use for every challenge is, I've never done this before. <laughs> so, it must be so annoying, I guess, to the people who had spent years, um, uh, you know, uh, developing their craft in comedy or improv or any of this kind of stuff. And um, I just was running and running about the work and being like, I've never done this before, but I'm going to give it my best shot. And um, I'm actually <laughs> proud of like what I managed to achieve, you know, not having much experience in some of the fields that the challenges required for us and um you know I give myself a lot more credit now um uh, in areas that I wouldn't have given myself credit for before going in and I'm I'm just proud I genuinely wouldn't change a thing I don't think I could have done any more so I'm proud I'm so proud of myself and that is a rarity for me so I am very grateful <laughs> I mean we knew you could do beauty and glamour but now we know you I can do well, That's the thing I did. It's so funny to me. Like, I think coming in as saying that you love fashion, like the one thing I wanted to hear, I think, from the judges, and I got that on episode three, was like, you get fashion and this right. is, um, and that you understand it. But I think what annoyed, like what upset me sometimes is that I think when a look, when I'm wearing clothing, because it's, to me, I think I've had a lot of critique about like my drag accessory being subtle or, and I think it's maybe just Drag Race viewers are not necessarily used, to, especially Drag Race UK, because I am the first one, but even in the US, like not necessarily used to seeing more showgirl aesthetics and the aesthetics that trans women put on in drag. And I think for me, like, to be, to have to be like almost the guinea pig and have the British public like try and decipher why I do the drag I do and why it looks more subtle than the other queens um, might be, might have been something that obviously was the, like a shock or the first time. Like I've had a lot of people saying that, that you didn't look like you belong there or, um, and uh, that is um, a hard thing to try and justify when, you know, trans women have been such a crucial backbone to the drag community and, and um, you know, drag performance um, and the history of drag. So um, I'm glad to be that trailblazer, if you will, but I think it's led to quite a few misunderstandings about my drag. And I just wanted to hear like, oh, you get fashion, you understand it. These references are fabulous. Cause I understand week to week, if I'm, if I'm referencing 
Valentino one week and Christian Cowan the next week, then it's like, you're still wearing clothes. Like you're not dressed as a Venus Flytrap or a cat. Like it's just like another pretty dress from Dakota. Um, but I, I'm glad I'm watching it back now. I'm very, I very much understand that, but I'm looking at all the shoots I've done and put on social media. And I really feel like my work stands on its own and I'm proud of it for what I managed to do. But it's just on that stage, it might not have been right, but I'm, I'm still really proud. Well, there's no requirement for how draggy you have to be on this show. I mean, like RuPaul says, you're born naked and rest is drag. So <laughs> it yeah. doesn't matter. Look, you yeah. gave us drag, you gave us comedy, and you gave us lip syncing as well. I mean, your lip sync uh, no, that was a double really. chante. That was Thank a double chante. Thank you. No, I, I'm really surprised. I think I necessarily didn't have to give myself the credit I deserved for lip syncing before I went and I put everything into that lip sync because I knew Baby was going to be um, fierce competition and um, uh, as much as I hate musicals and hated that song as well um, I learned every single lyric I knew every single beat um, and I I'm so happy with that lip sync and the response for that lip sync um, really has made probably one of my favorite moments from the season. No, to go, to go around with you, okay? Because the only musical I can really enjoy is High School Musical 2. Like, that's the only <laughs> one I can like, right? I think that's a good one. I do like camp rock. I'm very much a product of my generation. Um, I like camp rock, and I um try to think of other musicals. Like, I don't hate all musicals. I think for me, I was trying not to get the Thorgy Thor edit where I'm like, I'm being set up to fail. So I basically <laughs> threw the entire musical genre under the bus mm. in 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 lieu of saying, I hate the musical you've given me um, <laughs> and not drag the producers. Um, but um, I actually have come to love it. I think watching it now, I'm like, it makes so much sense that I, why was I being so stupid? But I think it was a perfect time in that competition for me to get in my head because I was on top of the world. I'd won two badges. I had done well in the improv. I was like, oh my God, like nothing's going to stop me. And then they threw this rusical at me that I would like literally wanted to claw my eyes out um, reading the script um but I think it's a fun, it's one of my it's actually one of my favorite episodes I think it's so funny watching myself just like be like just not want to be there my body language the whole episode is just so memeable like I've had so many people on Twitter make the most hilarious memes of my reactions in that episode um but yeah I'm I've come around on it now and I do enjoy Larry Poppins the musical so you can have that for the record that's your exclusive <laughs> what your comments made uh, some queer people, a small majority of queer people who don't like musicals feel seen. So thank you for that. I thank know. you. I'm representing all communities. You've got the trans community and the queer community against musicals. <laughs> um, so as the first um, ever trans woman on Drag Race UK, what has response been like from viewers? Because when we last spoke, you said you wanted to show the audience that uh, the trans experience isn't just doom and gloom, which you absolutely have done. So what has that response been like? Um, oh my God, it's been amazing. I, I don't think we're privileged enough um, to see, uh, you know, nuanced and interesting portrayals of trans people um, in a lot of media, uh, specifically in the UK. And I think because they are so limited, when we do eventually get representation, a lot, the community rallies around um, uh, you know, said trans person. And I have felt that beyond um, any means. Like it's just been so beautiful and the messages I've got from trans people have just are just so overwhelming and I've had so many people come up to me on different gender journeys if they're non-binary or they're thinking about coming out as trans or what about like social presentation like so many interesting conversations I had one in the smoking area last night for about an hour <laughs> uh, with someone just like um literally having a TED talk with them but it, it's the reason why I do it and I do talk for England baby make sure to read me for that in the reading challenge um and uh, I I um, am just glad that if I can talk about something, it is trans rights. So I'm very grateful. <laughs> and uh, what are your hopes for Drag Race UK now in terms of diversity now that we've had the first ever trans woman with you? With you? I mean, it can only go up, I think. Um, and the UK drag scene is so diverse and has so much to offer that, you know, there's no reason that every single year uh, those quotas or the, the the cast won't look even more diverse and representative of British drag. And I think that has been what such a lovely thing about the season and what we've all come away feeling is that um, so many different facets of UK drag were represented on this season and um, everyone is so starkly different and individual and it's just been a beautiful diverse cast and I'm just grateful and I hope it only goes up from here so. 
um, on the series, you opened up about your incredible relationship uh, with your your twin, Winona. Yeah. <laughs> I have to ask, is Winona preparing her season five audition? Ah, uh, um, oh my God. I think um, it's so funny because I think on television, I must come across as like super anxious and insecure. And everyone would ask me like, oh, so like who, what, what like all twin stereotypes? Like who's the angel? Who's the devil? Like, blah, 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 blah. like all these twin stereotypes. And someone tried to ask me to describe Winona and I just was like imagine me but 10 times more insecure and 10 times more shy and 10 times less likely to go on reality television and I think um they might need a self-confidence course or maybe they need to download a meditation app or something and maybe they'll be ready for season six um <laughs> but um uh if not um I think they're very much happier in a library or in a, se a seminar um researching queer history they're very intellectual they're incredible or knitting uh, with a cup of tea and playing Animal Crossing they are the um very much the relaxed version of me right. so um maybe not season five but we'll see <laughs> I was going to ask if one day you and Winona ended up on a versus the world or an all-star season would you end up versus the world season 56 um maybe we'll wait um, I was going to ask if you were going to be willing to send her home one day, but that feels mean now. That feels mean. Uh, I, I don't. I don't think she'd ever forgive me. Um, I think. I think it would be like a, a full Rujubi moment on All Stars One. We'd just be uh, right. swimming in control, uncontrolled into each other's arms. Um, uh, it was. <laughs> um, I cannot imagine that situation going down well. But it'd be great television. So. Um. <laughs> It would be great TV, but um, there'd be Ofcom complaints again, I think. <laughs> Not more. <laughs> more. Yeah. Uh, Dakota, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. You've been incredible this thank year. You so incredible and can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you so much. <laughs>